Hello, everybody, and welcome again to another edition of Sports Predictions. We are your hosts, Movie Master Mike. And Boston Boy. And we are back and just as mediocre as ever with week 20. One. 21 of <laughs> the 2014-15 NFL season. We are in the postseason. We just finished week 20, which was the... Divisional round? No, the conference, the conference championship. championship. yeah. <clears throat> so before we get into the Pro Bowl and deflate gate, mm. let's talk about the games... That happened in Week Twenty, the championship game, starting with the Packers at Seahawks. Mm. What a fucking thrill game that was! I know, at the well, end. It, it, especially the end. Like my God, my God! Like for 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 both teams. I mean, you would tip your hat to the Seahawks. I, I really personally dislike the Seahawks, but I mean the play calling was commendable. Um, uh, the, the the fake field goal was uh, was perfect. You know what I mean? Um, and, and executed well. Uh, the onside kick, where I can't remember the guy's name that yeah, screwed it up for Jordy Nelson. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Oh man, the guy's probably sick. Uh, and all of Green Bay is sick. It's it's terrible. It's terrible. If he just got the hell out of the way, Jordy Nelson would have recovered it. If so many things had gone differently, uh, the play calling adversely on on Green Bay side at the at the last bit there. What yeah, are you thinking? They I know, had yeah. Clay Matthews, the last seven snaps. Uh, the last seven snaps of, of the uh, of the end of the game before they went in overtime, he wasn't even on the field. And this guy's making play. I mean, he's the, he's a known playmaker. Right. He's been making plays all game. Why the hell isn't he on the field? You know what I mean? Like, what are you thinking? It, just everything. They ran the ball four times. He got stopped and had to punt it. And um, I mean, I, I can understand wanting to play it safe. You know, just run the run the clock. But the way that things were going, uh, I think they. It was a combination of both. You know, I don't think you can blame either. I mean, the, the Packers blew it, and, and the Seahawks really took advantage and capitalized. There was at one point, I've heard two numbers. I've heard a 1.5% chance the Seahawks would have won at one point in the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the heard four, and like, heard 4%. Yeah. After, like, each, like, event, their percentage went up and up and up right, and up. Right, But at one point, it was, yeah, 1.5 was yeah. the lowest number I've heard. Either way, very low chance of them possibly winning. So how can you blow it that bad? I mean, just, just sick. Yeah, the... It started with the the fake field goal mm. with the the holder throwing the touchdown. Right. And uh, what's the defender for Green Bay? He he was like blocking balls and stuff all game long. Oh, and on that good. pass, which was it wasn't an Aaron Rodgers or any kind of like capacity quarterback dart. Yeah. You know, it, it was like yeah, it was a good throw. It was a good throw, but it seemed like it was up in the air for a long time. Like right. they had a long time. To get in the way and block the pass, but he just didn't. He just and it's like if it's your job. I know that ninety nine percent of the time they're just kicking a freaking field goal, but that's your job to rush and to be aware of the fact that they might go for a fake. You know what I mean? Yeah. How can not a single one of you catch this freaking slow? I mean, the guy that's catching the touchdown, by the way, is a defensive lineman. He's not even a receiver. Yep. Let alone the guy throwing the ball is is a freaking punter. You know? No, no, he was the holder. Oh, the holder, the holder, yeah. snap, the snap holder, whatever. Yeah. Um, so. So yeah, like it was just like so. It started with that. Then they got um, the two point conversion. Mm. You know, on right. another fucking like he was like he was way on the other side of the field, barely yeah, lined it up, like, like everything back. went perfectly yeah. for them. I mean, it wasn't perfect. I mean, the way he had to to do that, but yeah. And then like out, and b- but... before all that started happening, he was playing like the worst game any quarterback has ever played. And it was like oh for six yeah. and four interceptions. Yeah, it was just terrible. But he just he kept targeting that guy. Four interceptions later. You know, he still is targeting and got a touchdown to yeah, fucking curse. the game. Yeah. yeah, the guy that's the hometown kid, apparently he's from Seattle, and the whole stadium erupts, you know what I mean, in overtime. Like, uh, they keep showing this clip of uh, people that had their cell phones going in the field. Like, it, it's pretty uh, it's pretty hardcore to, like, to, again, as much as I hate the Seahawks, but to be in that stadium and be a fan would probably be pretty... Pretty crazy, you know what I mean? Yeah, the way it yeah. erupted, you could just screaming. Everyone <laughs> like out of their mind screaming. You know? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, like, it was just like game, an but... improbable comeback win. You know, yeah, it was just crazy. Right. Like it was just unbelievable how everything went wrong for them for most of the game, mm-hmm. and when it really mattered, everything went right. right the onside yeah. kick just it just went right. Everything went perfectly right. It, it was partially execution and, and partially because again, like I was just saying, like I mean that wasn't. Perfect execution the way he, you know, that two point conversion ran off to the sideline and just bombed off this Hail Mary, yeah, yeah. a two yard Hail Mary, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, but it worked out, like you just said, it, it, 
and part of it was execution and again play calling. Um, yeah. Pete Carroll is a pretty. I don't like him either. I just don't like the whole organization. His face really bothered me, Pete Carroll. <laughs> he just seems like a skeevy little... He seems like he, 20 years ago, could have played Littlefinger in Game of Thrones. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> 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 um, and the way he chews it and the way he talks, like he, he's like 80, but he acts like he's like 20. You know? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. He is a lot older than he... He looks much younger, though. He does in, way, in ways, but sometimes you get the HD camera on him and you can see all the wrinkles and crinkles in his face and... Um, I think he looks much younger than But he, he does like, have a young face, like, design, yeah. I guess. But yeah, but yeah um, what a crazy, crazy comeback win. I know. I, know. I mean... I, but, I was sick to my stomach. I, I really mean, wanted Green Bay. Yeah, I wanted Green Bay to win. But, like, as I was watching, like I, like, I felt bad that the Seahawks were doing so fucking terribly for most of the game. Yeah. So when they started coming back, I was like, what? I was like, they got fucking that onside kick? Like, what? Like, I started getting excited just because it was so improbable that... Right. I just started rooting for the good things to happen for them, but uh, uh, I would like it to be a close comeback. But the way they took the lead before the end, and the Green Bay Packers had to kick a field goal to tie it up, it it made me sick, man. Um, yeah, but the Green Bay Packers, like they just, it seems like they gave up. They weren't yeah doing the things well, they could have done to win. Like I was mentioning with Clay Matthews, like I can't figure out why they took Clay Matthews out. Unless yeah. they thought that they were saving him for the Super Bowl and like they were just conserving energy, whatever. I, I don't know, but. Um, yeah, but like when you have to come back, you know, like I don't know, like hmm. I mean, like I mean, you hear Mike Golick say all the time, like the defense has a chance to stop him, like right. the defense should have stopped them on all of those occasions, right? You know, and uh, when it went into overtime, the defense should have stopped them, but at the end of regulation, Green Bay should have gotten a touchdown. Yeah. What was it? Three times in the first half, they were held to field goals. Right, exactly. Yeah, you know, they, they, they didn't even the, try the like on like fourth line. and one. Right. You know, it's like they went like oh, well, well the, the the, this, and that was one thing where yeah, you say go for it, go for it, but at the same time, it's you got stopped three times already at fourth and one. You're gonna go for it again and you get nothing. You might as well get the points. You know. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. I kind of agree with that. Like, get get what you can when you can. Right, you know, you yeah, always have terrible. you always have your next possession, but the play calling should have been well enough to where they should have been stopped three times out of four in the first place, and had to get to fourth down and make that decision. You know, you should have. Yeah, I don't know. So yeah, I mean, it was just oh, excuse me, it just a crazy, crazy, crazy comeback game. So uh, congratulations to the Seahawks. I mean, it went two years yeah, in I mean, a row. Part of me wants the Green, Green Bay, wanted the Green Bay Packers because I thought it'd be an easier game, but then. Part of me also feels like I think the Seahawks are probably the better team. They're at least the the better matchup against the Patriots. I think the Green Bay Packers are a lot like the Patriots, um, but I think the Patriots are just a little bit better right now. Whereas the Seahawks, they're 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 different. You know what I mean? They they yeah, match yeah. up better. The, the defense is so energized and their mm-hmm. confidence. Like I was mentioning the last with the Ravens, game. you know that. The same thing. I think they're so confident. I think they're going to go in there and win every game. They talk like it. I think they kind of get in your head a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. You know the way the way Richard Sermon's always you know chip on his shoulder and that's an understatement. Uh, I hate Richard Sermon. He's uh, yeah, he is. He's a douche. Yeah, I don't like him. Sense, uh, I don't like his face. I'm glad that he hurt his arm. I hope it's still hurt. I right. hope we capitalize on it because Green Bay didn't seem to like try to do anything. I mean, they they threw it to him. Didn't he catch an interception in that game? Or no, maybe it wasn't. No, I, I don't think the game before that where they, they tried testing him and he caught an interception, but but no, because because he hurt his he hyperextended his elbow in the game against it, Green, Green Bay. Bay, right, right. And like you, you know, you constantly see him holding it and like, you know, it's like. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, did they test him before he did that, but not after? That's yeah, I, I don't remember. know, but I think the Patriots will. Yeah. You know, I think our offensive guys like if he's covering Gronk, I think Gronk might be like boom, like you know, elbow yeah. him in the elbow and yeah, you know, so. I mean, not not playing like really dirty, dirty but I mean, you, you, know. you play to win the game. Yeah, you, you know, and you got to do that. Like, I mean, you hear all these, I heard all these commentators like asking, like, why didn't they try to, like, not like you know, end his career or whatever, but like take advantage yeah. of him having a hurt elbow, right? You know, and they didn't really didn't seem like they took advantage of it, yeah. the Packers. So, but let's move on into the the next game, the Colts and the Patriots, the AFC Championship game. The Patriots ended up winning at forty-five to seven. To seven, yeah, it's complete opposite of the other game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just total domination. Yeah, um, as expected. In fact, uh, 
this is w- what I thought the score would be like, but I didn't want to push it last week. Yeah, I remember you said numbers. like that uh, we would maybe a throw up 40 points. 40, and, but then I was like, yeah. you know what, I don't want to get too crazy, and I think I yeah. stuck with 38 or something. But yeah, yeah, we This did. is we what I was thinking. 45 points, you know, yeah. 45 to 7. Because we always, I thought luck has been their quarterback, spank them. We always spank them. Right. So and, uh, I thought that, I mean, even half the time when Peyton Manning was their quarterback, but, yeah, like, except true. for a couple important games, but yep. um, I, I thought they would score more than seven points uh, on that side of it. I thought they'd, I, th- I didn't think they'd get out of the teens, but I thought that they would get more than seven, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then uh, I guess we'll go on into Inflategate. Yeah, yeah, because there's not a whole lot to talk about this game without bringing Inflategate, up Inflategate, so... Right. In Flakey, like everyone's bringing up this, it's this huge deal. They cheated this, that, like everyone's how long have they been doing this? And yeah. we just watched a little bit of research uh, before we recorded this. Yeah. And we found out uh, that at halftime, the balls were we inflated confirms. to proper inflation. Right. And in the second half of the game, the Patriots scored 28 points. We only scored 17. In, in the first half, with deflated balls, right, which almost begs the question: Did the the Colts mess with our balls and make, <laughs> make us mess up in the first half? You know what I mean? I mean that that just as easily. Not that they have very easy access to our our sidelines as football, but you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah, cause like everyone's making this better. big deal. Like, like, I hear Mike and Mike. Uh, they were saying like they don't think it had anything to do with the outcome of the game, and because it was 45 to seven. It's even less of a big deal. But then right. I hear, like, you know, they were reading, like, people's tweets. Uh, most people were saying, like, yeah, it doesn't matter what the score was. You cheat. You should be disqualified. People were saying they should not go to the Super Bowl, which I think is completely <laughs> to even suggest <laughs> that. So it, it boils my blood, man. That's yeah. it's, it's crazy. But, I mean, like, you hear people's, uh, they, they read people's tweets and saying, they're like, because they think that be, because of the, the score that the ball is being deflated in the first half had nothing to do with it. It's a, it's a minor deal. Right. And then people are saying, like, no, like, because of the, the gap, it's a bigger deal. Like, would they have scored 45 points? Like, but, then, so. like, but then we did the research, and they, they score more points it. with inflated balls. Right, so yes, that's the answer is yes. I don't think the deflated ball had anything to do with uh, the football hitting, uh, what's his name, in the frickin' face in the opening drive. I mean, they just collapse either way, but... Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. When you're throwing a football around, whether it's 5 pounds or, or, or 15, you know, it's, it's pretty much the same freaking thing. I, I mean, someone like Tom Brady that does it for a living might make a, a little bit of a difference because he's so used to it. But somebody with that caliber at the same time, it doesn't make a difference. They throw a football for a living, and uh, <laughs> they're good at throwing a football no matter what the weight is. Yeah. Bill Belichick was going on about in practice that they make them during his press conference about – during practice, the only time he messes with balls at all is to make them as uncomfortable for them as possible. He makes them cold, he makes them slippery, he makes them sticky, he does whatever he can to make it worse than it's going to be in an actual game condition. So right. the point is that, you know, I'm sure he deals with those balls just fine, you know what I mean? Those, those footballs, he's saying, oh, balls over and over. <laughs> footballs, we're talking about footballs. Yeah, but um, like, I mean, the balls are inspected by the refs. And then they're played within the game. Right. And then the, the refs handle the balls mm-hmm. after every single play. play right. Nobody noticed. Like it's like a Colt player to, to yeah, notice. Yeah, yeah. And... Nobody noticed except for a Colts player. And it's like, okay, maybe some of them were deflated, but we did better after they inflated them. Right. So and for this to be this huge deal, like we cheated to win, it's like, no. If we did, in fact, if Belichick or anybody told the ball boys or whoever... Mm. To deflate them, it hurt us. Right. It was a mistake. Yeah, exactly. To cheat, if right. we, if we in fact were conscious of cheating, right. it hurt us. It was better that we didn't cheat. Right. So, I mean, I don't think Belichick had anything to do with it. I don't think Brady, Brady had, anything, had anything, to anything to do with it. I mean, I don't think uh, anyone had anything to do with it. I don't think yeah. anything, anything wrong. I think this may have been going on for every team for for God knows how long, and it just took. The stupid sour grapes Colts to to actually call it. Oh, we're losing so bad. Let's let's grasp at straws for something to make us look. You know, yeah. this ball feels funny. So then all of a sudden there's this investigation. No one else has ever been checked at halftime. The you know what I mean. This yeah, has never yeah. happened before. So yep. it could be happening all along to numerous teams. It just, oh, it blows yeah, my mind. Yeah, it's, it's like, like who's to say that at the end of the game of any game from any team that the balls aren't a little bit deflated. deflated being right. and They're not deflating or, them and going on record and making a big deal of it, you know? Yeah, so, so I think Deflategate is being 
blown way, way out of proportion. Way out of proportion. Especially since, like, I don't think most people realize that the balls were inflated mm-hmm. at halftime. Yeah. So the Patriots were using Regular. regulation weight, you know, PSI balls after halftime. I don't think anyone cares to know that. They just want to complain that they're cheating. And yeah, exactly. Like, people fight. hate the Patriots because of Spygate. They hate the Patriots because of three Super Which Bowls. Spygate, we have, a, well, I have my own thoughts on it. it, it, it that was blown out of proportion as well. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just ridiculous. We did better with the inflated regulation balls than deflated balls. Right. So, even if... If somebody, somebody deflated them on purpose. Screw that guy, because you just made us lose. <laughs> you made us win by only thirty eight points. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, we could have won by fifty points if right. we would have scored twenty eight points in each half. We might have that one point where right before the half we got the field goal would have been a probably touchdown because yeah. he threw a lighter ball than he was used to. You know. Yep. And like I've, I've talked to some people and they're saying like, oh, like you know, if Brady didn't, you know. You know, you think he would notice that it's a little squishy. Like, well, you would think the refs would too, and they didn't. Yeah, right. You know, and then, because, I think it's because of the weather. Like, if it was just, uh, like, if it was a Super Bowl in Phoenix, it's going to be beautiful fucking weather. It's not going to be yeah. that cold. It's not going to be all that hot. <clears throat> you know, so like, if in that game, in that kind of weather situation, it was deflated, you would probably notice. But because it's it's cold, it's wet, it's rainy, you probably mm-hmm. don't notice a whole lot. And you know, like, it gives a little bit, like, you don't think anything of it, so you just keep playing. Yeah. The refs didn't think anything of it. Right. You know, so... And, that's, and during the, the press conference, they're talking to Tom Brady, and they're like, oh, he kept pressing it. Oh, I, we find it really hard to believe that you didn't notice that this that this ball was two pounds heavier or whatever it is, 25% right. lighter. It's like, well, do you know, like, the way he was reacting, I said, well, do you notice when your microphone is two pounds lighter? You know, would you even notice, like... Yeah. No one's thinking about that. He's like, I drop back and I, and I throw the ball just like I was doing. I'm not sitting there weighing the ball and yeah, playing with yeah, it. You know like, hmm, I throw the freaking ball. Like, you yeah, know, like, this you have, even suggest that. Yeah, you have like three is, seconds on each play to, to throw the catch ball, the snap, look around, and throw it. you know, and throw it and not get sacked. Like, right. you're not handling the ball like that much. Like, sure, you know, every quarterback has their own specific, like, you know, they interviewed you know Aaron. They like, right. Yeah, they, they interviewed Aaron Rodgers and he was saying, like, he likes his as pumped up. As possible, like he he even said, like I, I agree that there should be a deflation limit, which is like twelve point five psi. Right. That, that's the limit it's at right now, is as the lowest limit. Right. And the highest is thirteen point five, that it can be inflated at. Yeah. He thinks there should be no limit. inflation limit. limit. <laughs> he's like yeah. he's like you know, fill it till it's about to burst. You know, because I grip the ball really tight, like so it doesn't matter how how full it is. Like, right. I want it as full as possible. I mean, that would make a difference just like, you know, it, as far as catching it on, on any side of it, you know. Yeah, so, I mean, this is the play game. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, you know, everyone I... Well, you know, no, what I'm... What I'm... Sorry, to, what I'm really nervous about, what I keep thinking is that the... It just it pisses me off to know when that this is happening right before the Super Bowl and that they're, and Tom Brady's sitting there having to address this and get, getting his integrity questioned. Yeah. And it, not only that, but what I keep thinking about is that him, during the Super Bowl, on the next live game, being the Super Bowl, he's going to be catching these snaps, and for even half a second, if it goes through his mind that he's thinking about how, how inflated this ball is. Yeah. Because that has to happen after this week, you know what I mean? Yep. He's going to be like, this is the next game I'm playing. I... I, I can't help but feel like it's going to fuck with him and he's going to throw, you know what I mean? It's going to it's going to be that extra millisecond he's holding on to the ball. Like, how inflated is this? Squishing it? It feels kind of, like, hopefully he gets enough practice out of his system. Yeah. Because that's how I feel like I would feel, you know, the next game, like, the lights are on, you're in the Super Bowl, all this talk, you know, everyone's yeah, like, talking Yeah, like, everybody's about scrutinizing you for cheating and football, all these things. You know, yeah. He, so, like, it's just, you know, the more people talk about it and interview him and the team and the investigation that should get under the skin... You know, it's it's probably gonna affect their their play, their confidence, maybe. Right. So yeah, I mean, I, I feel like he's got thicker, maybe not thicker skin, but the way he handled the press conference, for example, I would have lost my cool at a few points, but he just kind of laughs it off, like I understand that I'm gonna go through this kind of scrutiny as a quarterback, you know what I mean, and, and have to deal with this kind of adversity and overcome it, and it's good sometimes to get this kind of a challenge because when you overcome it, it makes it that much greater, and, and that's a good perspective, but yeah. Hopefully he doesn't have my mindset where you're thinking about when you're taking the snap that second. You know what I mean? I, I hope that his mind works differently from mine. But yeah. I'm sure it does because he's a quarterback and I'm sitting here right. talking about him. Right. But, I mean, with this whole thing happening, now if we win, people are going to say, oh, it's because they cheated. Right. 
And if, and if we lose, lose, it's be like, oh, well, you didn't cheat, so you did, lost. Right. You can't win without cheating. And, you know, the cheaters lost. Cheaters never prosper. You yeah, know, serves so, right that too. So. so if he starts throwing interceptions, you're going to say, oh, that's what you get. The like, balls you know, aren't inflated yeah. enough. Yeah. Look at him. And then if he ends up aging next year and playing not as well, <laughs> they're going to say, oh, <laughs> he's not inflating the balls. And it's just going to never end, just like Spygate. Yep. Still hasn't gone away. I hear it at least once a day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Especially now. Yeah, yeah. Like I go to work today, and people say like, "Oh, like it's always something with the Patriots." Right. It's like, <sighs> yeah. Every I'm always wearing Patriots. So everywhere I go, strangers. Oh, inflation, huh? How about the inflation? <laughs> people are getting all psi psychotic. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, like uh, it's just if this was any other team. It would not be that big of a deal. It it's, wouldn't be a deal. No one yeah. would be talking about it at all. Yeah, it's because like, it's oh, the Patriots. People hate out. the Patriots for the three Super Bowls, the right. five appearances. Right. The, six now. Well, yeah, it's not six now. And uh, with Brady and Belichick. Mm. <clears throat> you know, the what, the ten conference uh, championship appearances. Mm. <clears throat> so, I mean, people just hate them because they win. Then the whole Spygate thing happens. So like now, like every win that they've ever had is is tainted with cheating. And mm. <clears throat> although so, they had, a, they they won more games after that, but that doesn't matter, you know. Yeah, but it, it so I mean, matter. like it's just that's too rational for. Yeah. So for, now it's just everything they do is going to be under question. Mm. Anytime any any kind of question like this comes up, they're immediately assumed to be uh, guilty, you know, because. Yep. They're tainted by Spygate. Yeah. Which, so, I, again, I don't even think that that's even a big deal. Never mind. I'm not even going to start talking about Spygate. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, if this is any other team, if the Steelers were it's like, oh, the Steelers' balls were a little deflated, it's like, so, yeah. uh, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's why he likes his balls. Like, just like, you know, Aaron Rodgers comes out a couple weeks ago and says he... He just got done talking about how he likes the ball bigger, the ball more inflated a couple weeks ago. No one talked about that. Ooh, what if it's more than 13 PSI? He's breaking the rules. It makes it makes it heavier so it goes faster and gets to his target quicker. They'd be yeah. saying that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. But yeah, sure, it's easier to grip it. Any type of – has their own – you know, anyone have their preference for any number of reasons on how the – you know, either way it's a, it's a football, you know? It, it depends on the, the size of your hand, do your fingers, how squishy the palms, your, the padding on the bottom of your hand is. Maybe the, I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's all kinds of stuff. I mean, but the numbers prove that we did better with inflated balls. Right. And so it didn't make a difference. Yeah. So this this it's that's, just that's really the bottom line and the most important point that everyone wants to overlook. They just want to look at no, it's about the integrity, and then that's what's more important. Which is ludicrous. I mean, we're playing a football game here. You know, would that have made a difference in the game or not? And clearly, it didn't. So, right, yeah. move on. You know, it's it's a non-story. Quit sensationalizing it. Yeah, um, it's just because it's the Patriots. That's the only reason. Yeah, is it's because the Patriots. They're under scrutiny. Like no matter what they do, it's going to be under looked under a microscope. Like the, the Seahawks. We were talking about this earlier. Have more PED violations than any other NFL team in the history of the NFL, and no one's crying for their disqualification. Which, in my opinion. I don't even know if it's an opinion. It's, it's clearly a far bigger advantage to have performance-enhancing drugs in your system than to have a, an over-inflated or under-deflated ball. Yeah, yeah. No, no I one's totally talking agree. about that. Yeah. I, I mean, those individual people got fined, and people forgot about it two days later. You know what I mean? We're not even talking about it. Yep. Yeah. They're it, probably it, right now on in, in PEDs. I'm sure half of this squad. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't, the, I don't even know what the whole scandal was at USC with Pete Carroll, but there was some kind of Pete Carroll scandal, right? You know, involving drugs, I think. And, yeah, and, and uh, so then you know, then the Seahawks, you know, the whole. A uh, drug thing, and then there. last two seasons they were penalized more than any other team, which means they cheat in games. Right. You know, I hear I heard people talking today uh, or yesterday that like, oh, well, that's like in play, like you know, it's like a foul, like you know, everyone holds and stuff, and it's like, well, well it's, it's still it's against the, the rule. Rules. You're breaking the rule. Yeah, you're breaking the rules. Right. I mean, okay, the rule is the ball has to be pumped up between this and that. And it was the rule. Well, the rule, rule is, is you don't tackle the the quarterback, hit him in the head, you know, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you don't you don't hold, you don't face mask or whatever. And the Seahawks do it all the time, more right. than any other team. Mm -hmm. So it's probably it may even be their philosophy, like disregard it, just yeah, f up the quarterback. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, it's just it just makes me mad that that people are thinking that. It came from the top. Bill Belichick told the ball boy to deflate the thing. Brady told him to deflate the balls. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, I think we ridiculous. get that out of the way. I guess that's another thing I wanted to talk about. The 
they were also one of the. Uh, I was listening to. Uh, can't remember him now, but he he was asking people to call in and talk about whether yes, do you believe Bill Belichick during his press conference, or or no, do you not believe. And most of the people said, no, I do not believe. And then their reasoning was always like, I, I can't even remember. One girl, hers was the most lucid of all of them, and even that, it didn't make any sense. But then the people that said, yes, I do believe, were the ones that make sense. For example, at one point, Bill Belichick said, he's like, uh, it's like he was thinking about it for a second, too. He's like, I, he's like, I never have touched a ball. He's like, maybe on an incomplete pass at one point, but d during uh, the, the game of uh, ball uh, uh I can't think of the word. Ball handlers? Ball a ball players. game. Uh, the actual game ball. A game ball. <laughs> I'm words. A game, I've never touched a game ball with the exception of perhaps an errant pass that you know I can't even remember right now. But the fact that he said never, what you do there, if you're lying, if you say never and somebody comes out and says, oh, that's not true, he touched the ball this day or this day, you leave yourself open for you know somebody to, right. even one person and your entire thing crumbles at that point. So. Right. Just the way he was speaking, same with Tom Brady. It's just so evident that that they're not being dishonest, really, about anything. Um, their whole demeanor, the way they were talking, clearly, this is all news to them. You know what I mean? So, yeah, the two biggest people that you could accuse—I mean, beyond that, what are you going to really accuse the ball boy and then try to light the Patriots on fire because the ball boy? If that really even is what happened, I mean, right. the two people that matter, whose uh, whose integrity is being integrity is being questioned here, I think have basically cleared their name. You know what I mean? In my opinion, just based on their press conference, just because if they another thing, if they were lying, I think they would have avoided a press conference altogether. Because if it came out that their investigation turned up, they were involved again. Their integrity would really be in shambles. If you came out in front of people, held a press conference, right, right, that'd be like the whole Bill Clinton thing. I did not have sexual relations, and then right. a month later. Okay, I did. I did. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah I don't like, see that happening. The way that they were talking, like I had no idea. You know, it's pretty clear to me that they're being honest. Otherwise, they would, they would know they were setting. They would be a lot more, uh, you know, close to the vest or whatever. Yeah, yeah, cl closed. Yeah, they wouldn't be talking more so as as much. So yeah, and I mean, even 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 if it did come from Brady and or Belichick to mm -hmm. deflate the balls a little bit to help us in this rainy weather. It didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't matter. We scored more points with inflated balls. Right. They're probably even if it was them, they're probably kicking themselves in the ass like we shouldn't even should cheated. Like what the, the fuck? Yeah. yeah. So it's just ridiculous. <clears throat> the fucking Patriots won. They would have won in any kind of weather with any ball. I think the, uh, one of the Colts players said they could have been playing with soap and they would have beaten us <laughs> or something like that. So. Yeah, yeah. Even most of the Colts players are saying. They fucking beat us. Right, except for a couple of them. One guy said, oh, if they get DQ'd, disqualified, does that mean that we play? I should stop drinking these margaritas. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He said, it might have been jokingly. Like, right. Uh, they like, oh, does that mean we get to play again? You right. know, replay the game? Even, even to suggest that, I think, was kind of a, a dick thing to say. But yeah, yeah. But I mean, most of them were saying, like, yeah, like, we lost, like, fair and square. And, 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 okay, let's bus. say we let that happen. Do you really think that they would stand a chance against the Seahawks? Like, it just... They they overachieved already. I think that they should yeah. have even gotten as far as they did. So yeah, that's true. be happy with getting to the conference uh, championship game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they they don't they're not good enough. They you know even if the Patriots weren't their opponent, they probably wouldn't have been going to the Super Bowl. Right. You know if it was uh, the Steelers. I don't know. The, the, if, uh, if the Ravens had beaten Ravens, us, Ravens, the Ravens would have fucking stomped through. the Colts. So yeah. even though their record was better, the Colts, but they're yeah they have a shitty team. fucking division. Yeah. Right. So. That's true. Yeah, I mean, it's over. The Patriots are going to the Super Bowl. Hopefully they put this behind them. I'd like to put this behind me. I wish this was the last conversation I'll have about it, but I know it's not going to be. Right. And a lot, definitely not the last to hear, but All right, well, let's, behind us. Yeah, let's move on into what's actually going to happen this weekend, which oh, yeah, is yeah. the Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl. We're have you ever them. watched a Pro Bowl? Yeah, I have. I think uh, last uh, every year in recent memory I've watched it. Yeah, not intently. I really don't give a shit, but... Right. Uh, I mean, who really gives a shit? Other than people that there are people that are like bet hounds or whatever you call them that, yeah, that yeah. put money on these Pro Bowls. <laughs> but um, it's interesting. You see all the stars. You know the stars, the second tier stars because all the stars are in the Super Bowl. <laughs> right, know? right. But uh, you know, really good players, and it's it's kind of cool. You can see the the score go up to you know almost eighty points half the time. So right. not really that high. But. Yeah, I don't think I've ever actually watched a game. I, I've watched a little bit of the uh, the skill challenges, mm. you know, back when they used to hold it in uh, Hawaii every year after the Super Bowl. 
Yeah. You know, because now this is, is this the first year that they're doing it in the same place as the Super Bowl? It may, may be, because I think last year it was in Hawaii. Was it? Maybe. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, because I know it always used to be in Hawaii, and yeah. it was after the Super Bowl. Right, well, as far as it's still, I think it was in Hawaii last year. I mean, it was obviously before, and it has been for a few years. Yeah, yeah, it's been in this, this bye week in between right. championship game and Super Bowl game right. for at least the last couple of years. I mean, yeah. I don't even know, because like I said, I never watch them. I don't care. Right. But um, is this the first year they're doing this whole, like, draft? Because usually it's just... No, this is the second year. Last year they did do that. It was Jerry Rice and um, Showtime, uh, Dan Sanders, and that was okay. pretty good. This year is Chris Carter and Michael Irvin, who they're moving down the chain, you know, like next year, I don't even know who they would do. I can't right. Im- imagine it would be more interesting than Deion Sanders and, and Jerry Rice, but right. as far as the drafters, but... Um, yeah, and is, is this the first year, or was it last year with the draft, that they used, like, specific team uniforms? Because usually in the Pro Bowl, yeah, they just use... You know, like away and home, red and blue, or something like that. Yeah. No, I thought like in the in the Pro Bowls past, like if you were on like the NFC would all wear your your home colors, whether that be black and red, blue and red, you had a white gray and white. Versus the, and then yeah, it may then be, like the AFC would always wear their away, which is just their plain white jerseys. Right, right. So that way, there's some differential. You know, the yeah. people in any kind of colored jerseys on one team. In the white jerseys. No, you know what? I am remember. No, no. Yeah, last year they they had like last specific years jerseys where it was like orange and green or something like that. Like that. And then this year is steel and yellow and orange, I think. But no, I, like, I, I watched the video of Chris Carter and uh, no, Chris Carter is is yellow. yellow. No, no, yellow it's it's a uh, it's like gray and like lime green. Right. Yeah, like a yellow green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. And, then, like uh, really, and then and uh, then Irving's it's, it's is orange. like it's black orange. and. Orange, it's orange, orange yeah. yeah. That's because I remember that the I for Irvin was was that green yellow, right, 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 and then the C for Carter, or maybe it is vice versa. But yeah, so anyway, but, last but, but, year it was something like that. But I'm remembering prior to that, like I remember like seeing uh, like Peyton Manning come out, or there's one of them, and it was red and blue at least at least for one year. And then okay. I remember there was like stars, um, you know, on the shoulder. It's something I think it was red and blue. Oh, okay. It had a more uniform. It wasn't like this new. Right, weird colors that they're doing now, where it's like neon and, and right, like, like the, like, like the, like the uh, Oregon Ducks kind yeah, of color yeah. scheme, yeah, you know? almost Seahawks. Seahawks ish, yeah, because yeah. they got that green color too, which yeah. I always thought was weird. I yeah, I feel like it doesn't belong in the NFL. It's like a college team, but yeah, me too. That's um, what I feel. Design too, it's a strange. Yeah, no, no, maybe maybe uh, you're right. With in Pro Bowls past, it is like you. This team wears red. This team wears blue. But all their helmets were, were still... Yeah, the helmets were the team, right. Were the right, team right, helmets. Right. Okay, yeah, maybe that's what it was. For some reason, I thought it was the jerseys as well. Because, like, you know, like, in in NBA, each year the jerseys are different, and it's very specific to the All-Star game. Right. You know, so I didn't, I couldn't remember about football because I've never, ever paid attention to any kind of football. Well, I mean, the All-Star game actually has... All the other sports, you know, you get the home run derby for baseball, you get right. the slam dunk contest in basketball... Um, football really has nothing. The skills yeah. challenge, I guess. Right, but it's not the same. No, well, even not. the slam dunk contest is not the same. I mean, every year it gets worse. Like, what else can these people do on their way to a basketball hoop? You know, like <laughs> you jumped over a car. It's like they're just doing every. Like he's coming out of phone booth trying to be Superman. All this yeah, crazy yeah, nonsense. Yeah, it's but, it's definitely lost. Um, Glimmer. Yeah, know, like it's, it's lost. It's uh, what is the word? Appeal? Like novel, novelty. Novelty. It's yeah. lost its novelty. Yeah. Like when it was Jordan and um, Dominic Wilkins. Dominic Wilkins. Like that was badass. Like right. that was like because like it was still kind of new, new and fresh and stuff. And, like and now it's just the like best ever. Like there was uh, it was like 06. Uh, some guy in the Celtics did the same thing that some guy in the Celtics like ten years ago did. Where like he went for a dunk and then like put his arm over his. His eyes to dunk it like mm. he did the exact same dunk. Like, it was the exact same. Like uh, it's just. This, I mean, I don't blame him though. I mean, what else <laughs> are you gonna do? What yeah. else can you do? Yeah, but I mean, what what could the NFL do differently to make it more interesting? I, and and I heard a I heard a I heard a discussion about this, and I can't remember now. Uh, what they're what they were thinking about replacing it with, but or just doing away with it all together, which I don't think that I think that would be a mistake. Because what are you gonna do on the Sunday between the Super Bowl? Just continue talking about the Super Bowl. I mean, yeah. I like the idea of the Pro Bowl, and it does gener- it generates money. And for some 
strange reason it gets a lot of views. People do watch it somewhere. I right, mean, right. I guess I am one of them because I actually do watch it. But Yeah, I plan on watching it this year because I have the day off. Oh, We're doing okay. these podcasts and stuff, so I might as well watch it so we can talk about it you know, before something. we talk about the Super Bowl next yeah, week. Maybe right. something interesting will happen. Maybe somebody will die or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be kind of tragic. But <laughs> yeah. It would definitely be interesting. Something to talk about. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, I just don't know what, what else they could do to try to make it any better. Because, like, you know nobody's going to be playing any kind of defense. Right. Well, no one ever you know? does. I yeah. mean, even in the NBA, it's just... Well, know, there was a play of... last year where I guess uh, there was two... Uh, and I guess there's a couple of interesting stories this year. I don't remember who the people are, but the same team got drafted by opposite... Uh, you know, so they're playing... They're, last year, it was two players on the Chiefs. It was... Uh, some defensive player was on one team, and he, like, demolished Jamal Charles, who is oh, yeah. normally his teammate. So there was all right. this, like... Dude, it's the Pro Bowl. Why are you hitting him so hard? <laughs> like harder than you would in the NFL, or you know, in, in a regular season game. Huh. I mean, that, that's kind of an anomaly. I don't think that'll happen. But no. there's a couple. Like there was a picture that they were posting on. Uh, it's each of them holding up their jersey in a mirror, and it says "Rivals." Uh, they're holding up. I'm sorry. One was holding up the Urban. One was holding up the Carter. But they're on the same team. I think they were both wearing the same team hat. I can't remember what team it was that they were on, but. Okay. That that's one interesting storyline that you get people on the same team that are uh, right. That's as good as it gets. I don't right. know. I guess that that's the advantage of doing a draft instead of just AFC NFC. And, right, exactly. Because then you, you get teammates voting, playing against each other, which is kind of kind of kind interesting. Of, yeah. So I mean, because I never, I didn't really. I, I do like this a lot better that it's that it's a draft system. At least it's something different. Maybe I don't like it better, but the fact that they're trying to add something new and right, right. they, they really good. tried with uh, the NFC I'm sorry with the uh, Pro Bowl draft like they they televised it and they get this goofy dude that's uh, he's a commentator but you could tell like he's really trying to ramp up the ratings by like trying to be funny and stuff and you know whenever they draft him oh let's say something but he just failed like every time it wasn't <laughs> funny at all but he's, you know he wanted to make you laugh but so they're, they're trying to do something different and uh, I like that about it, you know. And, yeah, yeah, I like how it is and different. To, and then just, it's competitive on, on not only NFC, AFC, like who really cares? It's one guy versus another guy, and you get that guy bragging rights, you know. Right. Especially last year when it's it, not so much Jerry Rice, but Deion Sanders is a big smack talker, a loud mouth, you know, so mm -hmm. you get these guys talking trash to each other, and that kind of adds an element, you yeah. know. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And I like Chris Carter. He's always on Mike and Mike. He's... Yeah, you know, and he's so. a he was a hard worker, best hands of all time. Oh, yeah. You can catch a football. So. Yeah, so yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, that was our week twenty one discussions <laughs> about the Pro Bowl, and no the Flight Gate, the Flight Gate, <clears throat> and the Seahawks' incredible fucking comeback victory against the Packers in the NFC Championship. So tune in next week when we talk about the Pro Bowl Super results Bowl. to and see if this Deflate Gate. Gets deflated, hopefully, because, <laughs> yeah, <you're right> <laughs> because it's fucking ridiculously stupid. Yeah. And then we'll talk about our picks for the Super Bowl. I mean, obviously you can probably guess who probably we're going to pick. <laughs> Maybe we'll throw a surprise in there. Yeah, yeah but we'll, we'll talk more about the actual matchup of the teams, yeah. you know, and not just recap of, you know, week 20. So <clears throat> until then, we are your hosts, Movie Master Mike. And Boston Boy. All right, see you next time.